Hey everybody, this is Matt with MattsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we talk about theoretical probability and favorable outcomes compared to what actually happens. We are in the Common Core Standard of Probability and Statistics, and today we're going to mainly focus on guessing what will happen using probability. Pretty cool what you can do with math, especially in probability and the use of cards and games and things like that. Probability comes up a whole lot. Got any question today is how can we find theoretical probability? And it probably comes to find out that you guys will probably actually have done theoretical probability in the past, but uh, probably have never called it theoretical probability. And we're going to look at why it is. All right. In theory, that's why we call it theoretical probability, you have a certain amount of cards in a deck. If you think about the ace, king, queen, jack, ten of hearts here in a deck of cards, there's 52 cards in a deck. And we're going to talk about what is the probability of drawing, say, these five cards at random from the deck, and only these five cards. That is the theoretical probability. In theory, what is the probability of it actually happening? Not when we actually get a deck of cards and start pulling the cards out of there. A little different. All right, so we're going to be picking cards at random, and we're going to be finding out the probability of how it actually happens or what it actually is. Well, theoretical probability, this is the basic definition that you're going to need to know. It's a ratio of how favorable an outcome is compared to the total number of outcomes. It's a ratio, so it's going to be written as a fraction typically, and it's going to be compared to what actually happens or what you want to happen, the favorable, as versus the total number of outcomes that could happen. And we're going to write it like this. We're going to have the probability, that's what the P stands for, of the event. Probability of the event. So, for example, like we looked at the beginning, the probability of pulling an ace, king, queen, jack, ten of hearts out of a deck. So we write the event here, and we write P on the outside, just like that with parentheses, okay? Equal sign. And remember, like I said, it is a fraction, so we're going to put the fraction bar there. And on top, on top we put the favorable outcomes, what we want to actually happen. Whereas on the bottom, the total number of outcomes goes there. So how many we actually expect could happen. All right, so let's take an example here. An ace of diamonds. How many aces of diamonds are there in the deck? Well, if you don't know a deck too well, there's one. Okay, there's 52 cards in the deck. There's 13 pursuit, hearts, spades, diamonds, and clubs. What's the probability that you'll draw an ace of diamonds at random? Well, there's one ace of diamonds out of 52 cards. So it's simply just one out of 52 one desirable outcome, one favorable outcome, versus 52 total options that could happen. Try this one. Four jacks. There's a jack of hearts, clubs, spades, and diamonds. What is the probability that you'll draw one of these jacks at random from the, car, from the deck? All right, there's four out of 52. Written as a fraction, make sure you simplify it, okay? So when we come down to this, it'll be 1 out of 52, we write this as a fraction, or as a decimal, it's 0 0.0, basically 0 0.02, or 2%, 1.9%. Uh, otherwise, for the second one, it's 4 out of 52, simplified 1 out of 13, or about 8%, 7.7%. You can write it in any of these three options here, uh, depending on what the question asks you. So you can give it as a fraction, you can give it as a decimal, or you can give it to me as a percent or whoever you're looking for, okay? All right, let's try this one. Pick a club, all right? How, how many clubs are there? Well, if you remember, there's an ace through king. That's 13 clubs out of a deck, okay? So it's 13 pursuit. And what is the probability that you'll draw a club at random? What about this? A face card. Now, if you're not familiar with a face card, it's pretty simple. It's just a card with a face on it, all right? So what is the probability that you get a face card out of the deck? There's three pursuit. Remember, 52 cards total. And remember, you want to simplify your answer, okay? What's the probability there? All right, it's going to be 13 out of 52 for the first one, 1 out of 4, or a 25% chance. Or the next one is 12 out of 52, 3 out of 13, or a 23% chance. A little bit smaller. So which one is more favorable? Drawing a club or drawing a face card? Well, if you said drawing a club, you're correct. And it's favorable by one card. One card difference, right? 13 cards here, 12 cards there. Favorable by one card. Okay. 
Which event is more likely out of those four? Drawing an ace of diamonds, drawing a jack, drawing a club, or drawing a face card? Compare the percentages. That's usually the easiest way to compare them. And then you'll notice that it is the club, drawing a club, 13 out of 52, where all the other ones were smaller than that. All right, let's talk about a couple definitions here. Favorable. What does favorable mean? We've been using this this whole time, but have you figured out what it means? Really, it's what you hope to happen. What is the desired outcome? If I want an ace of diamonds, what is the favorable outcome? The ace of diamonds. Pretty simple, huh? Whereas fair, something a little different, fair is an experiment where all outcomes are equally likely to occur. Think about a six-sided die, rolling a one or rolling a four. Those are equally likely to occur. All right, let's look at these experiments and tell me whether they're fair or not and why. You need to draw an ace, well, I need to draw a jack. Is that fair? Well, there's four aces and four jacks, so yeah, it's fair. What about this? You roll an even number or a three. Well, I need to roll an odd number on a six-sided die. If you said unfair, you're correct, because an even number and a three, that's four outcomes, where I need to get an odd number, which is three outcomes, four to three, not fair. You have the better chances. What about these? Do these two on your own. You draw any heart? Well, I need to draw two from a deck of cards. And you roll an even number. Well, I need to roll a two, three, or six. What do you think? All right. Well, three is unfair and four is fair because of the amount of outcomes comparable. All right, have you ever been to a fast food restaurant and they've been doing a contest and they've ever said things like odds of winning are one in four? Well, if you haven't heard the term odds yet, it's because typically it means something different than probability. With odds, it really means one winner to four losers. Whereas probability would say one winner to four total winner or four total people playing. So it's actually a one out of five chance. So if you go into a restaurant and you buy their fries and it says one out of four odds, that means one winner to four losers, not one winner to four total options or outcomes. All right, so if you buy 10 items, what is your, uh, what is the total amount that you should receive if you buy 10 items? Well, if you think about it, there's one winner to five total and you want 10 to, you want to buy 10 items, how many winning prizes should you have? Theoretically, that's why we call it theoretical. What should happen? Not actually what happens, but what should happen? Well, this is like any other proportion we've done in the past. We cross, multiply, and divide. X equals 2. So theoretically, if you buy 10 items for, all, for you and your family members, you should get two prizes. Now, is that actually what happens? Not necessarily. That's called experimental probability, and that's what we'll be looking at next time. All right. Using this spinner, I want you to find a theoretical probability and determine if the experiment is fair. So do this. If you win the number, it's less than four, and you don't win, your friend wins if it is not less than four. First of all, tell me the theoretical probability for each of them, and then tell me if the experiment is fair. Second experiment is you win if the number is a multiple of two, or your friend wins if it's not a multiple of two. All right. You ever been to a carnival and you're picking out the ducks out of a pond? Designates a prize? Well, you go to this carnival and the theoretical probability of winning is 9 out of 25. Well, there are 50 ducks total. How many ducks will have a win at a large prize? There's 50 ducks total. 9 out of 25 probability. All right, what'd you get? Remember, set up proportions. That's usually the best way to solve for these guys. Well, the first one, it's you have a 3 eighths and your friend has 5 eighths. And it's unfair because your friend has a greater advantage. Well, the second one is you have 4 eighths or 1 half and your friend has 4 eighths or 1 half. And it's fair because you both have the same probability. Well, if you think about it in the ducky award, it's 9 out of 25, x out of 50. How do you go from 25 to 50? 25 to 50 is times 2. All right, so 9 times 2 is 18. All right, how do you think you're doing with theoretical probability? Not too bad, huh? Can you answer this question of how you can find theoretical probability? I bet you can. 
All right, well, that's it. As we talked about theoretical probability for this lesson, this is Matt with MattsMath.com. Check us out on Facebook at Solving Maths Problems or on Twitter with Matt's Math. And enjoy math, guys.